Hi, this is Dunk Sergeant. Welcome to the Karst Valley Railroad. All aboard! Well, I thought it was about time that I stopped experimenting and actually did some work on the layout. I didn't particularly like the paper covered foam board that I was trying out, so I picked up some 11 by 17 inch expanded PVC sheets. I started out by uh, using super glue to glue them together. I made three modules, two of four panels and one of three panels. So I had 120 inches to work with. I'm stealing an extra inch to make it 121 inches long. And the bookcases are 15 point something inches, you know, it's metric. Uh, so the 17 inches overhangs, but it's going to make the scenery look a lot better. And once these are glued together, they are strong. And I'm not going to have to worry about the, uh, you know, stuff getting soaked into the paper and all of that. So I'm very pleased with this. It's not that uh, unreasonable a price and came right off of Amazon. I'll put the link to it in the description. I got some more stuff from Amazon, too. I got some electrical connectors and, and uh, other bits and bobs. So that's that. So here's the layout. I got the uh, the switcher going. Taking some mixed goods down to the other end, which is where the power station is going to go. I got two spurs there that I'm using just for operations. So that's the. Uh, West Maryland S4, number 145. So I'm using the reversing loop to come around. So you can back those in. Now you can't really see too well, but the, uh, the SD9 is down there. It goes back now these like I said before these there's three modules there's four panels three panels and four panels and you see the bridges in the middle I'm going to build that up and have like a uh, you know the gorge uh, and that's going to be about three three and a half inches tall I, I don't want it too tall because when I sit in the chair Right now, it's rated at eye level. Anything taller than that is going to be, I'm going to have to sit up straight, heaven forbid. And um, so here's the SD9 bringing some uh, coal hoppers. These I'm not going to be using them for coal. I'm going to be using them for the dilithium crystals or whatever. Uh, but he's they're empty, and he's going to back them up into the uh, mine facility. So that side is, it's got a little, um, you know, spigot, whatever you call it, uh, for loading up the cars. The spur on the other side of the mine is for like a cargo um, or just operations. I don't want to get that area too busy. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to put another spur in there, but I want to have some scenery too. And that area, right next to the mine, is where I'm thinking of putting the poop facility. So in the Karst Valley, because it's on limestone, the water goes down, uh, you know, the rainwater goes down through the soil and right through the limestone, right? So you get these sinkholes and you get these disappearing rivers and everything. So now I'm picking up this uh, caboose. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the only caboose I've got. Uh, and he's so he's going to bring that caboose back around to the other end. 
and the other end is where the uh, power station is. And so you see the where the little village is, uh, poop facility. So the poop has to all be collected. <laughs> That's what I'm, and then shipped out to a composting facility, and then it's okay. And that's the orange tank cars. So now, he's bringing the, uh, is that the, he's bringing the uh, caboose around, and he's going to back it into that spur. He, I say he, that's me, but it's a different me. It's an old me. It's, a, it's out of date. It needs to be upgraded. So you can see the uh, in the background there, you see some V8 cans. And I, I saved those back from the trash because uh, I th thought I'd scratch build the, um, the poop facility with big tanks to hold <laughs> the sewerage. And... Um, and then have you know the big poop emoji on it, and you can see the the laser ball thing over in the upper right hand corner, and I got the uh, Digitrax controller, and then that white box just to the right of the controller is my Raspberry Pi, so that's running GRMI, JMRI, and um, that works pretty good. I did notice that when I'm using, I've, I think I've got three, two phones and a, uh, an Amazon Fire to do the, the throttles, and it got a little confused, and the, um, the Baldwin 460, which we'll see in a bit, uh, would just stop, and then I'd have to put the throttle on again, and it would go a bit, and it would stop, and it wasn't track-related, uh, it was just, you know, the software was kind of going, oh, I don't know what's going on. Who, who's talking to me? Because it would get a signal from another throttle that says, no, that guy is at zero throttle. And so it would stop. So after I uh, shut everything down, started it back up, and stuck with just the one throttle, it wasn't a problem. I'm not going to worry about stuff like that. Um, so I'm, and I'm getting getting used to the uh, the manual switching, which is kind of fun. Uh, but you know, it's th these are small, <laughs> these are small things. My eyes are not working as well as they used to. But I've got the little uh, decoder chips, the static decoder chips, to put on, and those work so well. Uh, I didn't put a picture to them, but I'll put a link in the description. Um, they're just so simple to to st stick on the turnouts. You put them on your programming track. You give them the address, and then um, I have yet to do this, but it looks fairly easy. Is to go into JMRI and you know after you design the layout, and you can put the turnout IDs in there. Bob's your uncle. So the switcher here has just got done putting the mixed goods back in there and hooked up to that caboose and he needs to get out of the way so that the SD9 can pull back in there and we're going to pretend that he's now off taking that to wherever it's supposed to go. Of course that's illustrated by going round and round. So I think of these Ys are also really great because most of the time I don't have to switch them because they're they lack the spring switches. So I if I want to run a on the local, which is what I'm calling the one with the Ys, I can have it run around, run around, and it's got the two reversing the Digitrax uh, reversing boxes on both ends and it just he can go around on on that all day or I can switch him off to the outer loop if you will which of course uses the same bit of track on the on the bull noses at the end um, but here we just this is so this is as if he's taken off and gone 
to some place where they don't have limestone so that they can compost the poop. Personally, I'm a great believer in composting poop. I don't think that it should ever be dumped in the ocean. I don't. Uh, who's dumping stuff in the ocean? I'm not dumping stuff in the ocean. Let's stop doing that. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we can recycle. <laughs> I, I know some relatives that I'd like to sign up. So, I've got this, uh, the Baldwin 460, and that's my sort of passenger, scenic passenger rail service that goes around. If, you, if you've ever looked at karst features in the landscape, they are just gorgeous. Uh, so I can easily imagine people getting on. And as it uh, comes around the side here, I'm going to put another passenger station or a depot right there. And so it's going to be kind of kitty corner opposite. I like this layout because I can run the local traffic back and forth and do some operations without interfering with the round and round of the scenic rail. I want to get uh, an engine house in there, um, a maintenance facility. I got to get the power station in, the mill in. I'm going to have to sit down and start gluing stuff up. Uh, but the wife really loves this PVC stuff because it's dark like the other stuff. It looks a lot better. I'm going to build it up and I'm going to have some drawers underneath it so I can hide the controllers hide the throttles and hide, do all the storage, all the little boxes right underneath that and I can disconnect them and move. So now it's time to retire for the day and put the passenger cars back on a spur. Actually this spur is where I was thinking of having the uh, an engine shed. So we've got a power distribution board. That's uh, three for the three modules. And then these Phono RCA screw things to connect the modules together and make it so I can disconnect. And then an endoscope so I can actually see these little details. Check it out. What's nice about this is it has a little light on it and it's autofocus. I'm going to try to connect it up. Uh, down at the train set, see how close a picture I can get of the trains going by. Because the camera doesn't really like to focus on that. So that should be interesting. I still have to figure out how to, figure out how to do that. That's Uzumaki. That's about it. I'm Dunk Sergeant with the Cars Valley Railroad. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Over and out. <laughs>